Hey again, this is Melissa Olson from RPI, Director of Infor NHCM Solutions, and and Matthew Slazak, Principal Consultant on the HCM side here at RPI so as well. So this is session two, week two of our employee engagement series. Uh, if you didn't catch it last week, it is out on LinkedIn Live. You can find it on RPI's channel, on my or RPI's. Uh, LinkedIn page. You can find it on my LinkedIn page, Matt's LinkedIn page. We you should be able to find it somewhere. Um, and we talked about really the engagement <laughs> for uh, the new hire. How do you keep that that new hire uh, feeling warm, feeling part of the company for the first year, not just the first two weeks or thirty days? So go watch watch that if you haven't, because um, we're going to kind of piggyback off of some of the messaging today. Uh, we hit this slide last week, and what we're going to talk about today is more of the internal mobility and a little bit of the manager expectations. We're going to talk about, you know, how all of your incumbent employees, the employees that are there today, that have been there for years, um, how do you ensure that they're happy and they're feeling challenged and they uh, want to stay with the organization? And how can you best find their talents? and uh, things that suit them as they grow with the organization. So, uh, so Matt, let's, let's kick this off and, and show us what we can do in both the info, we'll, we'll talk a little process and we'll also talk a, a little bit about software and how you can support those efforts with info. Sure, sure. So, you know, one of the big things that we, we wanna do in, in terms of keeping everybody warm and really keep them, keeping them fully engaged is this whole concept of this uh, uh, continuous performance or really getting uh, uh, that constant flow of communication back and forth between the manager and the employee. Um, but it goes beyond that too. Um, now, Infor has uh, released the employment employee engagement platform inside the system itself. So it's, it's part of core GHR now. And the really cool part about it is they really do try to look at all the different pieces of it. So not just that manager employee communication, but also something as simple as um, complimenting your employee, uh, your coworkers, you know, giving them a quick high five um, and really kind of pushing out that recognition to everybody. If you see something that happened that's really good, you know, why not just give somebody a quick shout out and say, hey, this is, you know, I saw you doing this, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, how do we recognize that? How do we get that information out there and to other that's people? A, that's a really uh, good point because a lot of times teams will do that and maybe they will, and not teams, Microsoft mm -hmm. Teams, but maybe they will, uh, you know, <laughs> send out emails or recognize within their own area. But doing something like this gives it a broader audience and, and helps the, the, uh, the departments or the teams that actually don't do this and didn't either think about doing this or didn't have a, a platform or structure to do it. So I, I like that, uh, that you brought that piece about it up. Yeah, it, it's something that, you know, we've seen some clients who actually go out and get a third party mm -hmm. software for it, um, where they're just doing this for, you know, a quick high five or uh, any of these things. It, it's a separate software piece. So all of a sudden we're building an interface out there to feed over employee demographic information, just so somebody can say, hey, yeah. great job today. Um, but they've, they've integrated it right in now. So that's, it's a really nice piece. Um, so I'll just kind of quickly show you here, you know, not only is it something that I can go ahead and receive raves, I can get those high fives from people, but I can also send them out to everybody else. So it's something that really empowers your employees to be able to go forward and say, Hey, you know, I saw this person, they did just an awesome job today greeting patients, or uh, they were working the front desk and they handled a really difficult situation um, and they, they helped that person who came in or you know anything like that. Those quick recognition pieces, great way to make sure that people are you know paying attention and getting so recognized. It's even outside your team. You're able to recognize anybody mm -hmm. in the organization that that's See, and that's, that's a really nice piece too, because it's a lot of times your manager or your colleagues aren't seeing what you're doing to add value with the organization and maybe, you know, align with the mission goals, mission and goals of your organization. So I, I love the example that you brought up. Right. And, and it's something where, you know, it's, 
it's something that you know, adds a little bit of gamification into the whole employee experience too. You know that that concept of it's um, you know you don't want to say it's it's uh, the word fun. Uh, the, the F word at work, you know, it, it's really not that case. You know, we want to be able to have people engaged and, you know, really know that their efforts are going towards something, a well, little bit of gamification in it, and though. something is, so fun. right, exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm totally kidding. You know me, I, I love yeah. uh, fun at work. Um, but, you know, if, if you can see on the screen there, you know, we even start to hand out, the system is automatically handing out like little badges. Uh, saying that, hey, this person is like, this person's a rock star, they recognize a lot of people and they receive a lot of recognition. Um, and you can even go through, right, exactly, you know, and, and you can enable the system as well to show those badges to other people. So if I go through and look at the employee directory, I can all of a sudden see all these badges the person has for awesome customer service or, um, you know, just the first line defender or something like that, you know, the, the people, you know, can see that and their, their vision and, and what they're doing into what they're doing is really great to just be able to let people see that their, their work's not going unnoticed. So what else do you uh, have there um, in the employee engagement module? Which is yeah, so the other really nice piece here is the whole concept of pulse surveys. Um, you know, our company does it, a lot of uh, companies do it now where we just are sending out just quick questions to your employees and just say, how are you feeling? What what are your current barriers to your work? What are the roadblocks that people are throwing in front of you? Um, just to get kind, kind of that quick feel for what's happening out there. Um, our managers have a lot of things to do. There's a lot of different things that they're tracking and something as simple as that sometimes gets lost. And so you can have the engagement administrator kind of push those questions out and see that company-wide, or you can be very specific in terms of who's going to receive these and you know how quickly can they provide feedback. And I think you know, that's really helpful when an organization really wants to push real change. How, if they come up with mm -hmm. this engagement mm -hmm. program and they push it top down, they don't know that um, you know, this is what the employees actually want. If it is, you know, massages at work, let's do this. It's going to be self self care for everybody, but maybe that's not what people need uh, during their day. Maybe they don't have time to take a massage, right. but there are other ways that, you know, they could have ideas that they'd like to share with the organization and helping with their mental health or helping with those obstacles and blocks and being able to make some real changes from the population up is um you know so helpful mm -hmm. by being able to get that and i guess you know really the honest you know the first part is that honesty creating that safe space where employees mm -hmm. feel that they can answer these surveys without retribution without bullying without mm -hmm. so um you know i know we really haven't talked about that and we won't talk about that in today's i think you know next next series part three or last i think we'll really start talking about more of the softer things around engagement. How can we create that safe space? But so, you know, you roll this out tomorrow, you may get real answers and you may not. So, so we've got the right. software. So let's, we'll, we'll talk about the tech today and then we'll talk about, you know, a lot of the, the change management around it next week. Right, right. And, and, you know, when it's, when it's kept informal like this, it's really nice because it, it's, it doesn't feel heavy handed on it. You know, that aspect of retribution kind of can start to fall by the wayside because it's really, you know, it's the company is just asking how I'm doing, which is, you know, a little bit different than the company is yeah. telling me what I did. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a shift in the paradigm. So really powerful little piece inside there, I think. So I know we, unfortunately, we always All limited right. by these LinkedIn lives. We, we can always talk for an hour. And if you want to talk for an hour, we're on YouTube. Right. But um, but what else? Uh, what else do we want to hit in the next couple of minutes? Yeah. So another really nice piece of engagement is you know that that quick check in capability. Um, that's the third kind of pedestal on an, uh, on the employment employee engagement uh, module. Um, just to be able to push that out there and have the expectation and have it tracked through that 
the manager is having these check-ins with their employees and here's what's going on with them. Is it something that they're running into? You know, they've got a challenge out there or even, you know, on the other side, you know, track accomplishments, say that, hey, this person did a great job and we don't want to forget about it later on when we're doing a formalized performance right. evaluation. All of this and, will, can roll if you decide to retain the annual and not do a complete, complete mm -hmm. performance model. Exactly. So to your point, I mean, this is a, a view of the performance appraisal itself and you can actually bolt, bring in the answers to poll surveys or what raves have they received. Have they received, you know, a thumb or those, you know, badges we were talking about? Are they getting awards from this? That's great information, great feedback to have on your performance evaluation. So it's no longer just performance and goals. It's everything. It's a holistic Helps view. Give that um, cultural fit too. How are they doing in this organization? They may exactly. be brilliant and do their job well day to day, but if they're not engaging and feeling a part of the team. Um, they may be looking elsewhere to find something that feels more comfortable for them, or you may be feeling like, oh, there's just this friction, uh, you, you know, they do everything well. And in this market, it's really hard to say, we, we want to be able to cherry pick and find somebody that's right for our culture, but also, you know, the culture doesn't have to be defined. Um, you know, I think teams have different cultures. I think there's, there's just a, a lot of ways when you recognize that somebody's not feeling a part of the group or they're not contributing that you can you can catch that before they've already decided to leave or you've decided they should leave. Right. And and when you get down to that engagement, the other thing that really it plays into, you know, you want to keep the person from walking out the door. So that's where it can really flow into something like succession management. Um, it's a it's a little bit of a larger module to set up, but it's really powerful in terms of letting people see like, oh, well, I'm part of the plans for the future. Something that has recently come out within the software, you know, we've always had the succession plan and how to, and building all that out, but just recently they've actually released something called career planning. So the way I kind of have described it to people already is succession management is very administrative. It's, you know, something that managers would set up or your succession administrator would be looking at that. And how do we make sure that we're always backfilling? Career planning kind of flips that around and says, okay, me as an employee now can actually start to develop my own succession plan. I want to think about what I do and how can I get to the next step? Or, you know, how can I move forward in the organization? So a quick screenshot that you can see there is somebody as an employee can go in and look at roles that are out there, look at the qualifications, look at their fit analysis and say, well, I really like this job. I can flag this as a favorite position and I can actually build, a, uh, build my plan for how can I get there eventually. Um, so that's a really nice change where it's no longer just admin down. It's now employee being And, and the problem with admin down, and there's no problem with admin down, right? If you have a succession, if you are able to get to the point where your HR teams be being able to build these, um, which I know it's, it's hard to do in a lot of organizations. Um, but then you look at your pool and you're looking at a pool of people that have skills for their jobs, not necessarily skills for the next jobs. So now you're, you're looking five mm -hmm. years, three years out to develop them, where this, you're having people that are constantly developing themselves for the jobs that they see they have potential to move internally. Right, and then the neat thing about it as well is you can actually build succession management so that you can build a talent pool that's looking at anybody who has completed their career pathing so that you can even kind of proactively look out there and say, hey, this is somebody who's mm -hmm. interested in this. They don't have the skills yet, but now maybe I can reach out to them and say, hey, they look engaged. They might be a really good fit for another uh, for another yeah. position later and, on. Start to grow them out that way. a little bit way. in the past about talent mobility, and this is the same thing, being able to say, we have some hard to fill roles. Who are the people in the org? And, you know, we've has been doing this really well with their talent science uh, product is mm -hmm. who can we find to move into these hard to fill from the pools of the easier, higher turnover roles? 